Mr. Perfect. It was a perfect summer's day, and on this perfect summer's day, Mr. Perfect was looking more perfect than usual. Now they hear out of place. Mr. Perfect lived on Tip Top Cottage, and on this perfect summer's day, his house was also looking even more perfect than usual. Not a curtain out of place. I suppose you're wondering why Tip Top Cottage was looking so perfect. I shall tell you. It was Mr. Perfect's birthday, and he was having a party. There was a knock at the door. Perfect! cried Mr. Perfect. How very kind of you! He said when he saw that all his guests had brought wonderful-looking presents. Please do come in, and if nobody minds, we'll open the presents later. Nobody minded in the least. Well, almost everybody. What's that? Roared Mister Appetit. I don't have time to waste. You know, you'd better make sure we don't get bored today. Do you think this upset Mister Perfect? Of course not. Mister Perfect had per perfect manners, unlike rude Mister Appetit. Oh no, my dear Mister Appetit, we shouldn't be bored today. He replied. First of all, we shall dance, and everybody danced. Even Mr. Appetit, but all he danced, Mr. Appetit couldn't manage a smile. Unfortunately, Mr. Clumsy, being his usual clumsy self, broke a pile of plates. Do you think this upset Mr. Perfect? Of course not. Don't worry, Mr. Clumsy," said Mr. Perfect. And being the perfect person he was, and not in the least bit clumsy, he proud produced a whole lot more plates, made of cardboard. Then he brought a cake. It was huge. It looked wonderful. It smelled terrific. And Mr. Greedy thought it tasted delicious. He gobbled up the whole cake in three seconds flat. There wasn't a crumb left for everybody else. Anybody else? Do you think this upset Mr. Perfect? Of course not. Being perfect, he had already guessed what would happen. Quickly, he brought out of lots of small cakes. There were plenty for everybody, even Mister Perfect. But as he was not greedy, he only ate one. One cake was just perfect for him. Once everything had been eaten, Mister Perfect opened his presents. He said as many thank yous as there were presents. Well, not quite. What about my present? cried Mr. Mean. Mr. Mean's parcel was so small that Mr. Perfect had not seen it. Mr. Perfect opened a tiny parcel wrapped in newspaper. Oh, Mr. Mean said, Mr. Perfect, you've given me a lump of coal. How kind of you! It's delightful. If I'd known, I'd only have given him a half lump. Grumbled Mr. Mean. That's it. I've had enough. Cried Mr. Appetit suddenly. I'm fed up with you, Mr. Perfect, and do you know why? I'll tell you. I have discovered that there is a most enormous and underable, underable exploiting fault with you. Would you be so kind to tell me, kind as to tell me what that might be? Asked Mr. Perfect as politely as ever. Don't you understand? cried Mr. Appetit. Your fault is that you have no faults. The end.